in reading and your hearing. The oil purifies the soul. In elaborating, I'd like to share with us how it's written in the Hebrew as well as in the English. In reading, then he answered and speak unto me, as referring to Zechariah the prophet, saying, This is the word of the Yahweh. Okay, you read from right to left. Yahweh. This is the correct reading. And what they did, they turned around and they put in Lord. Lord means Baal. That is not right. Unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Whose spirit? My spirit. The Bible says, It's my spirit. My spirit. Okay? This is what is being said here. Now, saith the Yahweh of hosts, Zechariah 4, verse 6. We are going through a storm here in the East Coast, so bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. This figure presented to John by Christ when he appeared to him on the island of Patmos is similar in many respects to the one shown to Zechariah. Review and Herald, May 16, 1899, paragraph 2. Here we have a picture of the angel speaking to Joshua. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is much depicting here in regards to what is taking place as follows. For example, number one, Joshua is represented as pleading with the angel. Are we engaged in the same work? Absolutely. For example, number two, are our supplications ascending to God in living faith? This is personal. You don't have to be open with this. You can only answer to yourself and respond to our Savior. For example, three, are we opening the door of the heart to Jesus and closing every means of entrance to Satan? I pray that is our desire. For example, number four, are we daily obtaining clear light for greater strength or and greater strength that we may stand in Christ's righteousness? And this is what we want. For example, number five, are we emptying our hearts of all selfishness and cleansing them preparatory to receiving the latter rain from heaven. Review and Herald, November 19, 1908, Art A, paragraph 7. So therefore, we are now in the process of repenting prior to the Day of Atonement. Because when the Day of Atonement comes, my friends and strangers abroad, we have to make sure that no sin is upon us that we have repented. Now, many Christians around the world, denominations, have shared that it is no need for us to go through these routines. Well, I got bad news. If you don't do this, there's going to be sin upon your soul. And there ain't going to be no intercessor when the final day of atonement is fulfilled. Knowing the tragedies and all that is going on all over the world, I want a clean heart, and I don't want no record of what I've done to be proclaimed at the judgment hour before the Father. I want someone to intercede, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, who is interceding now and calling all souls to repentance. And we may understand the Elijah message and understand what is right before us. This evening, as the Sabbath begins to dawn, we also want to share with everyone is that these notes that I emphasize here is for our growth as Christians at Seventh-day Adventists men and women all over the world. We got the message, and we need to impart it. Can I hear an amen? Okay, the message has been changed. Why? It's because many of these brothers and sisters came out of Sunday denominations, and they rejected the prophet, Alan G. White. They rejected the writings that were given to that one individual, as well as many other prophets. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a repeat of time and time again, that it shall be repeated, and he will have a clean people, a last Sixth church, which is the remnant that goes through after they have been purified in the fire and tried for their faith. Can I hear an amen? So there are many good possible key points here that can be achieved. Now is the time when we are to confess our, and forsake our sins, that we as a people may understand what is before us. 
that they may go beforehand to judgment and be blotted out. And this is what we want. We want our sins, ladies and gentlemen, to be blotted out. We've confessed them, but they need to be blotted out before the judgment of every individual. Now is the time to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of Elohim. It is dangerous to delay this work. Can I hear an amen? It's dangerous. Satan is even now seeking by disasters upon sea and land. And as I pause for a moment, the disasters that have just happened, ladies and gentlemen, the lava occurring for the last five days has increased big time in Spain. It has destroyed the vegetation, it has gone into the ocean, and it is expanding time and time again, trying and attempting to make it bigger. Ladies and gentlemen, all these issues have been arising for much, much time lately. And with the next few months, with the last few months, last few years, all these tragedies have been occurring. And we are definitely in Matthew chapter 24, verse 8. It's time of sorrows. Let me repeat it, if I may. Thank you. Satan is even now seeking by disasters upon sea and land to seal the fate of as many as possible. What is the defense of the people of God at this time? The defense of the people of God now is to repent and prepare for the day of what one meant, to prepare to receive the early and the latter rain, to be sealed in the living book of life, and our sins be blotted out. It is a living connection with heaven. This is what we need, a living connection with heaven. If we would dwell in safety from the noisome pestilence, if we would be preserved from dangerous from dangers, excuse me, seen and unseen, we must hide in God. We must secure the protecting care of Jesus and holy angels all around us. However, in these last days of peril, the Lord would have us walk before Him in humility, which is a prerequisite for eternal life. Instead of trying to cover our sins, as the majority of millions and millions of people have attempted to do, He would have us confess them as Joshua confessed the sins of ancient Israel. Can I hear an amen? This is an analogy. In reality, did it occur? Yes. We profess to be the dispositories of God's Torah, His law, we profess to be building up the old waste places in Isaiah chapter 58 and to be rising, rising, excuse me, raising up the foundations of many generations. If this great and solemn work has indeed been committed to us, how important that we depart from all iniquity. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. It's very, very important, saints. Wonderful events are soon to open before the world. The end of all things is at hand. The time of trouble is about to come upon the people of God. In discussing the time of trouble, I like to add that the time of trouble began in the year 1847. Supplement to Christian Experience and Views as well as Experience and Views. And as you've noticed, the prophet has given us plain key points in regards to the time of trouble. The little time of trouble will be occurring. Then it will be Jacob's time of trouble in Revelation chapter 17. However, ladies and gentlemen, there has been much preaching, much understanding, and much ignorance in regards to his law. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I speak with you in Rome, there are having meetings of religious leaders around the world gathering together to emphasize climate action change now and to emphasize Laudato Si. Laudato Si is a very strong bill. Laudato Si is the foundation of the New World Order, the foundation of control of every business, corporation, bank, food resources, water resources, clothing resources, everything. This is what this gathering is all about, in which these kings, these leaders, these presidents, have already negotiated and followed through. They have received their orders, and for those that have not, they will not receive and be able to buy and sell. This issue, ladies and gentlemen, is now taking place. So as we are in the month of Tishri, and the prophecies have been revealed to us, 
and Jonathan Kahn has revealed much information, the harbingers and the second harbinger and the issues that have taken place, and he has made great resources in regards to research and in regards to what happened in the past with the Hebrews. An analogy that happened in the past, it's happened now with the Twin Towers and issues that have come and gone. And it has been correct. Yet we as a people that have received much light, much privileges, have ignored the prophecies for our time. In this study, I hope that we can come together and recognize the importance of repentance. In the year 1847 A.D. is when it began, the time of trouble, and it will end until the second coming. However, then it is that the decree will go forth forbidding those who keep the Sabbath of the Lord to buy or sell, which was taking place in Rome today, October 9th, 2021. And they're threatening them with punishment and even death if they do not observe the first day of the week as Sabbath as a Sabbath. Now, what I want to share here, ladies and gentlemen, is that the messages that have been going through the prophet are also being placed before us right now. You can also find this in Christian Service, page 155, Religious Liberty. In reading your hearing, I'm going to repeat it. Then it is that the decree will go forth forbidding those who keep the Sabbath of the Lord to buy or sell and threatening them to, and, excuse me, threatening them with punishment and even death, if they do not observe the first day of the week as the Sabbath. Review and Herald, November 19, 1908, Part A, Paragraph 12. Receive the mark of the beast is what's being discussed. In other words, the buy and sell issue is part of Laudato Si. In Laudato Si, if you have not read it, I encourage you to read it. There are many studies that have come out from Catholic newspapers and in the Internet. These meetings are taking place as I speak to you right now. However, this is a Sabbath. And your representation of all denominations is in Rome, including the Seventh-day Adventist Church relationship representatives. The dialogue has been going on for years. Now they come to the final negotiation. And this is why the Seventh-day Adventist Church, through the prophet of Alan G. White, had emphasized that the Seventh-day Adventist pastors would persuade the members within the church to keep the first day of the week because of Laudato Si. An overwhelming surprise would step in. And the majority of Seventh-day Adventists are now in that process. Also those in the General Conference and also those around the world. Leaderships. All self-exaltation and self-admiration are the result of ignorance of God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent, how quickly will self-esteem die and pride be humbled in the dust when we view the matchless charms of the character of Christ. The holiness of his character is reflected by all who serve him in spirit and in truth is a recommendation which is a prerequisite. He wants us to reverence him in spirit and in truth. If our lips have need of cleansing, if we realize our destitution and come to God in contrition of heart, the Lord will remove the uncleanness. He will say to his angel, take away the filthy garments from Joshua, from Zechariah, from Zerubbabel, from Ted Wilson, president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, from the pastors in the North American Division, from the pastors and leaders in the Union Division. Ladies and gentlemen, we're running out of time and clothe him with change of raiment. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 4. Review and Herald, November 22nd, 1896, paragraph 7. But poor repentant mortals hear the words of Jesus and believe as you hear. And he answered the accusing charge of Satan and speak unto those angels that stood by him, no, that stood before him, excuse me, to do his bidding saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. I will blot out his transgressions. Amen. I will cover his sins. I will impute to him my righteousness. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. President of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Ted Wilson. You can receive this blessing. 
You can receive this blessing today by repentance of what all you've allowed, all your leaders all over the world. You are the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And as president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you can put your foot down. You can get your ambassadors and you can have them to ask them for reconciliation of what all of you have done in tearing down our doctrines, tearing down every iota that deals with salvation instead of compromising with the beast. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 4. The filthy garments are removed, for Christ says, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. Verse 4. The iniquity is transferred to the innocent, the pure, the holy son of Elohim, God, and man, all undeserving stands before the Lord cleansed from all unrighteousness and clothed with the imputed righteousness of Christ. There's the, that's what I'm referring to. Imputed righteousness of Christ, which was the 1888 message that was rejected by all of them. Oh, what a change of raiment is this. <coughs> Letter 16, MS, MS 125-1901, paragraph 41. Now, let me share a little bit here, ladies and gentlemen, in this matter. This foundation here represents, and it's an analogy, symbolic line, represents the marriage supper of the Lamb that is miles and miles and miles and miles, that if you're standing here or sitting here at the beginning of the table, your eyes cannot see what's at the end. You have billions of people sitting here. That's what you have. They are sitting there, ladies and gentlemen, and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, is putting the crown upon every soul. Can I hear an amen? They've made it to the marriage supper of the Lamb to finish the Passover. Can I have an amen? amen. In reading your hearing, and Christ does more than this for them, ladies and gentlemen, strangers. A, and I said, let them set a fair metar upon his head, so they set a fair metar upon his head. Marriage Supper of the Lamb. My prayer is that we'll all be here. We will all be here. Those of you who are watching and will be watching. Be and clothe him with garments, the character of Christ, which each one will have. They will have the crown that Christ put on them. They will have the garments on. See, and the angel of the Lord stood by. D, and the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house. In other words, to judge my house means that you will be holy, that you will be in the kingdom, and that you will be one of the persons or people who will be in the process of judgment of the righteous and the dead. And if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Verses 5 through 7. This is the honor that God will bestow on those who are clothed with the garments of Christ's righteousness. With such encouragement as this, how can men continue in sin? How can they grieve the heart of Christ? How can they grieve the commandments of Elohim, the warnings, the sermons? We are compassed with the infirmities of humanity, and that's a fact. So also was Christ, that he might by his own example condemn sin in the flesh. He did that. He took upon himself the likeness of sinful flesh. Constantly he beheld the character of God and constantly he represented that character to the world. Can I hear an amen? He did that. That's Christ. The one who was clothed with filthy garments represents those who have committed wrongs, whatever it is, but who have come into no... Excuse me. But who have come into so sincere a position of repentance that the Lord who forgives all sins that are repented of was satisfied. This is the Elijah message, brothers and sisters. Satan seeks to place in a humiliating position those who have truly repented of their sins. This is what he's constantly doing, always bringing to the mind of the people. 
but there has to be sincerity. And once we have repented and they've been blotted out, there is no remembrance of the sin any longer because Christ has blotted it out. And those who are continuing in a wrong course of action are prompted by Satan to tantalize the one who has repented. And this is what's constantly going on in the membership of the churches or the remnant. Council. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 3, verse 4 to 7. In reading and in your hearing, Zechariah chapter 3, verse 4 to 7. And he answered and speak unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And I said, let him set a fair metar upon his head. So they set a fair metar upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Yahweh stood by. Verse 6. And the angel of the Yahweh protested unto Joshua, saying, Verse 7. Thus saith the Yahweh of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Men who have gone to great lengths in transgression and who have never confessed their sins will seek to bring all the reproach possible upon those whom Satan has worked to destroy, but who have repented and, hum and humbled themselves before God confessing their sins to the sin pardoned Savior and receiving pardon. Can I hear an amen? This is what the result is on this. And as we see the matter growing, as we see the issue of our conscience being agitated by His Holy Spirit and by the host of heaven, ladies and gentlemen, we believe at this time that it is time to repent. As it begins to grow, our conscience begins to bother us at night. We are not able to sleep. As you go to work, it is being brought to your attention. You're uncomfortable at work. You cannot think. You cannot type appropriately. But you try to brush it out of the way, but it's still there. It is because the Holy Spirit is bringing it to our attention that we must repent. Why? It's because our life is on the line of judgment. As we continue, Men who have not repented of their sins and have not received pardon will tantalize the truly repented ones, repeating their wrongdoing to those who knew nothing of the wrong done. They accuse and condemn the repented ones as if they themselves were guiltless. And this is what's going on today. All members of the churches have started different groups, different ministries, small groups, and they're all accusing each other of this is that, and this and that, and this and that, and this and that. We're all in the same, I've done that many, many times, and I do not want to do that. Because we are all human beings, we've all fallen. Sure, there are errors in the books. Sure, there are solutions. Sure, our Savior is interceding on our behalf. We serve Him. And in order to serve Him, we must bite the tongue. Beginning with myself first. Bring the truth out, and let the truth settle where it will. And let those who are hearing make a decision, a righteous decision for salvation. As the angel is with you until your eternal life. And the Holy Spirit is guiding you for righteousness. <clears throat> it has been shown me that the experience recorded in the third chapter of Zechariah is now present tense. In other words, that third chapter of Zechariah is taking place. It's present tense. It's occurring today. Being acted over and will continue to be while men making profession of cleanness refuse to humble the heart and confess their sins. Mercy. However, from the year of 1906, it's been 115 years to 2021 AD and following to the second coming. 
when this prophecy was given, when the issue was given, it's been 115 years from 1906 to 2021. You may count the years, 115 years. However, following till the second coming, and it's going to continue. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow. Now focus, focus now. Oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, the homeless, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. So what was presented in Tulare, California, is that prophecy. Now you all know that you're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. All this accusing of who's right, who's wrong, all this murder, all this whoring around, all this bikers, all these low riders, all this propaganda, all this cheating, everything that's going on, all this tattooing, because you don't love your bodies, it's a sin. It is a sin to put on tattoos, but you can remove them. Is there a technology for such a case? You better believe it. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this tattoo ink is poison. Did you know this? Now, all this murmuring, all this complaining with mom and dad and children and back and forth, that has to come to a halt. This cannot exist. Because we also have a witness. He wants to cleanse us before the Day of Atonement comes of all our sins, of all our iniquities, our transgressions which are many. He wants to make a holy priesthood out of you, all of us. He wants to continue to lead the pastors and the evangelists, the presidents of all denominations, that we may all be one church, the Philadelphia church, that we may all be transitioning into the remnant that he's prepared for our salvation. Yes. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Execute true judgment, Zechariah, and show mercy. Here's the execution of judgment. Mercy, compassion, and every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the children, the stranger, nor the poor who are in the streets homeless, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart, in your mind. Stop. For example, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears, that they should not hear mercy. For example, yeah, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, the Torah, the Ten Commandments in these last days, and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. For example, therefore came a great wrath, anger, from the Yahweh of hosts. For example, therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, there it is, they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not, listen to me, he says, Yahweh says, I would not hear saith the Lord of hosts. Same thing going on today. What happened in the past, it's going on right now. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 8 to 13. 21, letter MS, 360, 1906, paragraph 13. I must now close since my last visit to San Francisco. Focus, please. I have been sick with influenza. The spirit of the Yahweh was with us there. Be of good courage. She was sick of influenza, and at this time, 1906, she did not use a vaccination, period. She never used any of them throughout her whole life. She never recommended, period, to be vaccinated. I wanted to bring that out. On Beetroot, you will see the studies in regards to this issue on coronavirus, etc., and the influenza, the Spanish flu and the injections in regards to what she had to say about it. Continuing. This chapter is full of encouragement for those who do the work of the Lord in these last days. However, Zerubbabel had gone to Jerusalem to build the house of the Lord. Remember? 
In the Bible it says he went to build the house of the Lord, Yahweh, but he was compassed with difficulties. His adversaries weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and made them to seize by force and power. But the Lord interposed in their behalf and the house was finished. This prophecy right here that I just read, ladies and gentlemen, is referring to character development in these last days. Because all these theologians and all these Catholics and all these Jesuits and all these Seventh-day Adventist theologians and all these Protestant theologians of all denominations have their own preconceived idea in theology. Because of their researches, books that have been written, that's where it's all coming from. But when you go and read the Hebrew and you read the correct Greek, now you have a beautiful picture, a little closer picture to understand what's really being said. Our Savior leads us into righteousness and truth with His love and His kindness. And we are not pushed. And by the way, when we attempt to push into Scripture and say what is not there, then that is no more holy. When we continue to imply what it means, when it doesn't mean that, and you want to change it, that's murmuring, that's a sin. You don't do that. You don't force the scripts to say what they're not meaning. And this is what's happened. This is what's happened. This is why he's given us the Feast of Trumpets to repent for those two weeks prior to the day of it one meant with him, Yom Kippur. It's not nailed to the cross. It never has been and it can't. Because once it's nailed to the cross, that means that we're in the kingdom and we're in the new earth. It's over. But on the day of it one meant, the skies will open as a scroll and we will see his Torah. The whole world is going to see it. And the test for us in these last days out of 613 laws is the Holy Sabbath. Leviticus chapter 23 verses 1 through 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6, Exodus chapter 20. Now, I want to share a few key points. Many of you are probably asking what this is. Well, I put a stake down here and I ring the wire or the line from that stake, put another stake down here and I tie it up. This is what you call a plummet. You want a straight line. This line runs miles and miles and miles long. It refers to our characters. In reading your hearing, this is the word of the Yahweh to Zerubbabel saying, not by might, that's right, not by might, no by power, but the Father says, but by my spirit, no trinity here, saith the Yahweh of hosts, Who art thou? Zerubbabel says. Response, O great mountain. He says, Who art thou, O great mountain? He's asking the question. This is Zerubbabel. Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. In other words, he's going to strip him. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace. There's the key. Grace. Grace unto it. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet. This is a plummet. From this line to this line, that's a plummet. He wants it straight. He wants your character, my character, straight. In the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. The seven is the seven eyes that he has in the world. Those seven spirits, they are the eyes of the Yahweh which run to and fro through the whole earth. This, my brothers and sisters, is a plummet. This, my brothers and sisters, is the character of Yeshua HaMashiach. In other words, he wants you clean. He wants you to make sure that there is no jot, no tittle change. He wants to make sure that your character is a plummet, straight. He doesn't want you twist and twist. No, no. He wants you straight. You read in your hearing? The very same difficulties which were created to hinder the restoration and upbuilding of the work of Elohim is what's taking place today. There are many theologians that are holding back the people from developing the character of Christ. The great mountains of difficulty which loomed in Zerubbabel's way will be met by all who today in 2021 are loyal to God, Elohim, and to His work. Many human inventions are used to carry out plans after the mind and will of men with whom God is not working. But it is not boastful words nor a multitude of ceremonies that show that the Yahweh is working with his people. 
Focus on the dates, please. The assumed power of the human agent does not decide this question. Remember this. Those who place themselves in opposition to the Lord's work may hinder for a time, and this is what's occurred, but the same spirit that has guided the Lord's work all the way through will guide it today in 2021 and follow. So I made a mathematical plan. Our Savior has spent 1,113 years, 0.7 months in the holy place. And from the year 1844, October 22nd, which is our anniversary. See, the messages were given to the Gentiles. The Hebrews rejected it. And that's why they keep a month before than us. They keep it in September, we keep it in October. Because it was given to our people. Yes, we're unholy. But you see, our Savior used natural people to do His bidding. To be his mouthpiece. And from the year of 1844, October 22nd, our Savior has entered into the most holy of holies. The Bible tells us that. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we've noticed that from 1844 to the year 2021 has been 177 years that Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior, for all you atheists, for all you gangsters, all you government officials, law enforcement agencies. He's been inside the most holy of holies 177 years. Interceding on your behalf. And you've rejected him time and time again. You go to church on Sunday. That's not the Sabbath. You've been breaking the commandments. The whole world's been breaking the commandments. Because of the little light that the world has. With the Hebrews, the Jews, the Caucasians, the Gentiles. Let's put it this way. Spanish people, black people, all the chocolate colors, yellow, blue, white, whoever we want to claim we are, we're human beings made in the image of Yeshua HaMashiach. He's been in the most holy of holies 177 years today, which is going to be in a few days. So when October 22nd comes, it's 177 years. But right now, as I speak to us, it's been 176 years. Hmm? What's coming? What, what's going to happen? What else is going to occur besides COVID-19? What, what else is coming? Oh, it's going to be more severe than what has happened. Because our Savior is letting this occur. The host of heaven is letting occur what is coming happen. Because these fallen human beings that are so intelligent are being used by Satan to do the dirty work. Laudato Si is being forced upon the people and the laws are being changed. And man's laws are now being instituted all over the world. Have you noticed the difference of what's happening? Now the commandment keepers will be at the forefront proclaiming the messages and winning people back to the sanctuary as well as they present and prepare themselves for salvation. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Yahweh of hosts. Through the golden pipes, the olive branches empty the golden oil out of themselves to us who are worthy. These olive branches are the anointed ones that stand by the Yahweh of the whole earth. Through them, the Holy Spirit is communicated to the churches, all seven churches. Specifically, the sixth church, the Philadelphia church. Thus, heaven and earth are united. The power that is in heaven unites with human intelligence today. Review and Hell, May 16, 1899, paragraph 4. Focus on the dates. The Lord would have every soul strong in His strength. He would have us look to Him, receiving our directions from Him. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Elohim that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. This is found in James chapter 5, verse 7. If anybody lacks any wisdom, let him ask of Elohim, and he will give it to us graciously. The Ewan Herald, May 16, 1899, paragraph 5. God's people are to be educated to read the sure word of prophecy in the light of his living oracles. 
Then they are to proclaim the truth in all its power, strengthened by the abiding presence of Christ, which is Hamashiach, in the heart, the mind. What is true eloquence but the earnest utterance of truth? And truth is what we need now. When the truth takes possession of a man's heart, his mind, that man can be trusted because he is controlled by truth. The soul receives light from the light of life. And let me read this out once again for those of you that might be overlooking. <clears throat> what is truth? Eloquence but the earnest utterance of truth. When the truth takes possession of a man's heart, that man can be trusted because he is, a, he is controlled by his truth, by the truth. That man can be trusted because he is controlled by truth. The soul receives light from the light of life. 1901. This is how you can trust a person. We all need to study as never before the parable of the ten virgins found in, for example, in Matthew chapter 25. And before I do read, turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. I'd like to share something that uh, many of us might not know. And in this study, ladies and gentlemen, as we turn to Matthew chapter 25, I'd like to have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, as I bow before you, give me these words in love to share your key point that is very important. It's my prayer and hope for our salvation. In the name of Yeshua, open our citadel that we may comprehend spiritually thy word. Amen. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, and I believe that we may view... Verse 10. In reading your hearing, we all need to study as never before the parable of the ten virgins. And the reason why I put this up here, ladies and gentlemen, because this has been fulfilled and this is now going to be fulfilled once again. So therefore, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 10, reading your hearing, and while they went to buy, they went to go buy oil, because they ran out. The bridegroom came. The bridegroom is Yeshua HaMashiach. And they were ready, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Verse 10 is referring to the close of probation, my brothers and strangers, and family members all over the country and around the world. When he went in, probation ended. It's over. This is what's coming. This is why salvation, his love, his care, his protection is now being given to us. The Day of Atonement is coming, brothers and sisters. we only got a few days left. Every year we have to repeat this time and time again because we have to also repeat the communion service, which is an ordinance. It's part of the seal. He told the disciples after he finished washing them, he says, you're not all clean yet. Oh? They all wanted to be washed, etc. They enjoyed it. And a few of them rejected it because they felt that Christ was going to wash their feet. So we have to have communion. We have to prepare for the service that all things that are wrong may be repented of. That's why the communion service is given to us as human beings. Because we're not all clean yet. And the majority of the people in all the denominations, even the Seventh-day Adventist Church and Catholic members, mercy on them, we're not all clean then. We're still filthy. You have not been baptized, immersed in water, you're still filthy. But I got hope for you. When Christ was baptized, he was baptized for you Catholics. And for those of you that are so hard-headed, he got baptized for you, you atheists who believe and don't believe. Christ got baptized for you because he loves you. He, you're his creation. Can I hear an amen? You are his creation. Nobody wants to, he doesn't want to let anybody steal you from him. He loves you. He wants you to seize your transgressions. Homosexuals, lesbians, Transgender, he died for you. He got baptized for you that his blood may polish you and cleanse you of your iniquities. He says, please stop. Please stop your habits. I love you, but your habits are going to prevent you from entering my kingdom. 
It's going to prevent you from me giving the crown upon your forehead. Put it there. It's going to prevent you from going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. All you hell's angels, mongols, all these wannabe clubs, all these lowriders, imperial clubs, etc. He said, stop. Quit putting your money and investing it into material that is going to vanish away and burn. Take my yoke upon you and be clean. It's not burdensome. However, do it for the ministry. Matthew 25 verse 10 talks about the close of probation. So the five wise virgins are now waking up all over the world. They're restudying all over again, finding out what's really occurred in the prophecies to develop a correct character of truth. Getting rid of all this air that has been put into scriptures of the writings of Alan G. White. The Bible that has been changed various times. Everything's being judged, my brothers and sisters. But our concern is your soul. Be right in the face of the Son of Elohim who intercedes in our behalf, who is our lawyer, our intercessor. So no matter you're Muslim, Catholic, Seventh-day Adventist, Protestant, Mormon, whatever faith you want to be, atheist, our Savior loves you as the way you are. There's only one kingdom, one baptism, one faith, one salvation, and only one door that leads into that kingdom. Won't you join him this evening? Number one, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Number two, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. That oil represents the Holy Spirit. This is the holy oil represented in Zechariah. I answered again and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Question. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 12 to, 13, to 14. This representation is the highest consequence of those who claim to know the truth. But if we do not practice the truth, we have not received the holy oil. We have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the early rain, which the two golden pipes empty out of themselves. The oil is received into vessels, referring to the peoples, prepared for the oil. The oil is received into the peoples, the people, who are prepared for the oil. This is who receives it. It is the Holy Spirit in the heart which works by love, agape, and purifies the soul. It is the Holy Spirit that's been working all these years. It is the Holy Spirit that is the representation of Yeshua HaMashiach. And that Holy Spirit is Yeshua HaMashiach working in His power and His glory. And this is why He says, Do not grieve the Spirit, my brothers. Why? Because I'm not going to forgive you because time and time again, I've come to you gently, lovingly, not forcefully. You see, our Savior never forces Himself on nobody. And never should a pastor, an evangelist, and a layman and leader ever force the Gospels and the prophecies on anyone. It's better sometimes to hear and to listen and then the time will come, what is the answer? Then we will pray, because the Holy Spirit is waiting for avenues to open, to reveal the glorious kingdom of the Father, His salvation. Satan is working with all his hellish power to quench that light, and this is what's been occurring, which should burn brightly in the soul and shine forth in good works. So Satan is working with Laudato Si, he's working with Pope Francis I in order to quench that light that has been given to us of salvation and they're having their meetings and preparing their new world order. The words of God to Zechariah show from whence the holy golden oil comes and its bright light which the Lord kindles in the chambers of the soul gives light through good works to the world. Satan will work to quench the light God has for every soul by casting his shadow across the pathway to intercept every ray of heavenly light. He, Hasatan, knows that his time is short. His time is short. 
So who are going to be the vessels of the kingdom? That's the question. He knows that the time is short. He knows that everything that he has to do has to be done quickly. So therefore the father is going to speed up the time to his son and it's going to give the messages, the loud cry, the three angels' messages, the Elijah messages among his people that he's chosen. You see, not everyone's going to give the three angels' messages because of their sins, their backsliding, their whoredom, their going out in their families, etc., their wives, their children, all this stuff. This is why he is taking control of the reins and he is going to empower and choose who is going to give the loud cry and the third angel's message. Not everyone will receive the power that they themselves are expecting. Although they've been baptized, although they've been redeemed by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, they still need to go through the fire for seven days and be purified of the transgressions, not sin, not errors, not wrongs, transgression. Because sin is not going to rise up a second time. It is going to clean your house up and every iota that you've been watching on TV is going to be consumed. Every iota on the phones is going to be consumed. Those phones have been a problem. And it's been misused instead of the gospel ministry. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our Savior wrote through the hands of his prophets. They wrote on parchment paper. They wrote on bricks. They wrote on disc. The same message that was given in the beginning is going to be finished by the book work. Book work. You can give the three angels' messages to the satellites. You can give it to the TV. You can give it to the radio. You can give it to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can do whatever you want. But the message is going to be finished by the bookwork. Because all that is going to come to a close. The mark of the beast and the buy and no sell is already processed. It's in stone. It will close with the bookwork. And we will sneak into these homes. We will sneak into the communities. We will sneak into these countries. And we will sacrifice our lives to win those souls to give them the message. Can I hear an amen? The people of God must cleave to God, else they will lose their bearings. If they cherish hereditary and cultivated traits of character that misrepresent Christ, while professedly his disciples, you know, professing that he is his disciples, they are represented by the man coming into the gospel feast without having on the wedding garment. When Christ told him, who are you? Who are you that are, that are coming in here that don't have on my character, don't have on my garments? That's what he's referring to. So he got his angels. You get them people, you wrap them up, and you throw them out into utter darkness, into the lake of fire. That's simple. You only come one way into the sanctuary. You don't, there, there's no other door to come in. There's only one way in. You have to go through his flesh. You have no idea how royal, what he suffered, unless you have that interpersonal relationship with him. And you're receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit every moment of your life. It's just not a one-time thing, brothers and sisters. Steps to Christ reads, every early in the morning, Christ had to go out to the garden, go out to the fields, and he pleaded for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He needed to be refreshed because he gave up only present. The Father had to give him a refreshing of his spirit every morning, my brothers and sisters. Do you understand this? This is divinity. This is divinity and humanity coming together. Do you know how we feel when we don't see you being converted? When we don't see you accepting the messages when they are correct? Do you know how we feel and how we close the day? We're grieved. We feel exactly what Christ is feeling, but he's feeling more. While professedly his disciples, they are represented by the man coming to the gospel feast without having on the wedding garment. He didn't have the character. 
and by the foolish virgins which had no oil. They didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They've experienced the early rain, but they didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit in their vessels with their lamps. The lamps is the Bible. We must cleave to that which God pronounces to be true, though the whole world may be arrayed against it. By the holy being surrounding his throne, the Lord keeps up a constant communication with the inhabitants of the earth by the golden oil. The golden oil represents the grace. Here's the answer. Stay with me. The golden oil represents the grace that has been given to us. Favor. And you have no idea what that word means because the dictionary does not give you the correct definition. It's man's interpretation. The golden oil represents the grace with which God keeps the lamps of believers supplied. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. Were it not that this holy oil is poured from heaven in the messages of God's Spirit, the agencies of evil would have entire control over men. Review and Hill, February 3rd, 1903, paragraph 5. God is dishonored. When we do not receive the communications that He, Yeshua, sends us. Thus we refuse the golden oil which He would pour into our souls to be communicated to those in darkness and transgression. Do you know how, how lonely these brothers and sisters are in the homes who are older than us? Have you ever gone out into the country and, and do door-to-door -door work and want to pray with people and pass out literature or sell literature? Have you ever done that? I challenge you to do that this week or the following days. Just, just go out and, and choose a location where you're going to take a walk. Have some good walking shoes. And go pray with the people in the homes. Just go to one or two. You will see, number one, how happy they are. You will see, number two, oh, who is this? Number three, you'll see them surprised that somebody's come to visit them. You might find a home that will be empty because they've probably gone to church. Or if you go during the week, you'll probably find them working or in the school. But when you see these brothers and sisters of any nationality, they will be content. I got a visitor. They will welcome you to their home. Would you like something to drink? Where, where are you from? How, how, how may I help you? But when you come to ask them, I just come to pray. I, I want to pray for you. Some will say no. Some will say, okay, uh, or oh, uh, I, I got an appointment. That would be the, in other words, I don't want to pray. And respect that. Don't, don't ask them again. Just, if you may, you sense that well, maybe I ask again, do that. And they'll say, okay. Uh, what's your name? Father, in the name of Yeshua, I ask for your blessings on Pam. Bless her and her family. And prepare them for the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. She will say thank you. You have a nice day now, young man. I know because I've been there. When the call shall come, behold, or see, the bridegroom is Yeshua, cometh, go ye out to meet him. Those who have not received the holy oil, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who have not cherished the grace, his favor, of Hamashiach in their hearts or minds, will find like the foolish virgins that they are not ready to meet their Elohim, their Yahweh. They have not in themselves the power to obtain the oil, and their lives are wrecked. But if God's Spirit is asked for, if we plead as did Moses, show me thy glory, the love of Elohim will be, be, will be shed abroad in our hearts. The golden oil will be given to us. That's the promise, 1903. These empty themselves into the golden bowls, which represent the hearts of the living messengers of God, who bear the word of the Yahweh to the people in warnings and entreaties. The word itself must be as represented the golden oil, emptied from the two olive trees that stand by the Yahweh of the whole earth. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire, brothers and sisters. This will open the soul of unbelievers to conviction, 
The want of the soul can be met only by the working of the Holy Spirit of God. Man can of himself do nothing to satisfy the longings and meet the aspirations of the heart. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? If you want it, you need to ask for it. Then the angel that talked with me said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Yahweh to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, Zerubbabel, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Yahweh of hosts. The work before every soul who has the light of Bible truth is to allow himself to be worked by the Holy Spirit. You don't work the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to be worked on you. You have to, as well as myself, surrender to Yeshua and let the Holy Spirit work us. Bring into our minds, our conscience, what we need to do. We never ever buy the Holy Spirit. We never ever pay for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We do not buy the Holy Spirit. We do not work the Holy Spirit as the majority of people in the world have done. It is the Holy Spirit that is to mold us and work us and work through us to do what he's asking us to do. When this is done, then you definitely have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if this has not been done, then we have to ask for reconciliation before the Day of Atonement and ask for forgiveness. Can I hear an amen? And let Christ work and mold us into His image. Because He's the one that's molding us. Your anatomy, physiology, no matter how it looks, He's molding you into His image. Can we hear an amen? In reading your hearing, the work before every soul ha who has the light of Bible truth is to allow himself to be worked by the Holy Spirit. God's people are appointed to prepare the world for the great event of the coming of our Lord. Teachers of truth need always to remember that the church militant is not the church triumphant. And let me pause here real quick. The Seventh-day Adventist church is the church militant. But it will never, ever, 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 ever be the church triumphant. That's in another study that I've put out here for the last couple of years. It's a lot, and I will be replaying some of the information in another study. So that you will comprehend what our Savior has said. Why the church does not become the church triumphant. Present tense, it is the church militant. But it will never, ever be the church triumphant. Judgment has taken place. It is time now to come out of apostasy. In reading your hearing, teachers of truth need always to remember that the church militant is not the church triumphant. The servants of God must not strive for the mastery, there it is, or seek to be recognized as great men, but as good men. Envy and jealousy has corrupted many souls to their ruin. God's servants must learn to lean upon no human support, period. This is a council. They are not to be dependent on human praise. You never clap to an individual who is giving you a sermon. You, you never clap and lift him up. You don't do that. That's a sin. That's ignorance. You don't clap and continue to clap for that beautiful song that was sung. For example, like Whitney Phillips, everybody wants to clap. Sure, he's got a good voice. He's been blessed. He's using his gift to win souls. But you don't praise him. You don't clap. You don't stand and clap. You don't stand and clap for the pastor or the evangelist or the layman or the leaders that are preaching and giving the messages. You don't do that. You don't uplift humanity because humanity is sinful and terrible. You uplift character in you, the hope of glory to Yeshua. You give Him praise. But you never go and clap. You don't do that. They are not to be dependent on human praise or difference or depressed by human censor. Neither are they to look for human re recompense. Their record is not kept by human figures, but kept by one on high, which is Yahweh. The line in ministry, the line in pastoral ship, the line in evangelism, the life is lonely because it's only you and Christ and the Holy Spirit and the angels. This is why it's lonely. And this is why we hardly have friends because sin is brought out 
and yet those who are agitated and grieved tend not to socialize with them, but yet we're just like you, brothers and sisters. We've just learned not to do these things. We can have a nice, happy life and make friends. But respect the tradition and customs of others, yes, but not following their fallen ways. <clears throat> to constantly receive, one must constantly impart. Here's the key. The capacity for receiving holy oil from the two olive trees which empty themselves is by the receiver emptying that holy oil out of himself in word and in action to supply the necessities of others' souls. And this is what I'm doing tonight. Work precious, satisfying work to be constantly receiving and constantly imparting. If we don't impart, we're not going to receive from our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. We will not be guided. We have to impart this message. Give the message and let it roll where it's going to roll and let it consecrate what it's going to consecrate and bring in the men, bring these sheaves into the sanctuary. This is what the message does. The capacity of receiving is only kept up by imparting. Jews' prosperity was to reveal God's glory. Malachi 1 verse 11. The prophetic words of Malachi have been meeting their fulfillment in the proclamation of the Lord's truth to the Gentiles. God in His infinite wisdom chose Israel as a depository of priceless treasures of truth for all nations. He gave them His law, referring to His Torah, as the standard of the character they were to develop before the world, before angels, and before the unfallen worlds. However, they were to reveal to the world the laws, 613 laws, of the government of heaven. By precept and example, they were to bear a decided testimony for the truth. The glory of God, His majesty and power were to be revealed in all their prosperity. They were to be a kingdom of priests and princesses. God furnished them with every faculty for becoming the greatest nation on the earth. But they fell because of transgression time and time again. Through disloyalty, God's chosen people developed a character exactly the opposite of the character He desired in them to develop. They placed their own mold and subscription upon the truth. They forgot God and lost sight of their high privilege as His representatives. The blessings they had received brought no blessing to the world, which ended in 31 AD, and the gospel went to the Gentiles in 30, 34 AD. Can I hear an amen? Amen. All their advantages were appropriated for their own glorification. They robbed God of the service He required of them, and they robbed their fellow men of religious guidance, which is also taking place today, and a holy example like the inhabitants of the anti-deliverant world. They followed out every imagination of their evil hearts. Thus they made sacred things appear a farce saying the temple of the Yahweh, the temple of the Yahweh, are these. While at the same time, they were misrepresenting God's character, dishonoring His name, and polluting His sanctuary. Your reference is in Southern Watchman, January 10, 1905. Second reference is 4 Bible Commentary, 1181, paragraph 1. God requires more than we give Him. Malachi chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And quoted, the Lord requires all who profess to be His people far more than they give Him. He expects believers in Christ Jesus to reveal to the world in word and deed the Christianity that was exemplified in life and character of the Redeemer. If the Word of God is enshrined in their hearts, they will give a practical demonstration of the power and purity of the Gospel. Can I hear an amen? amen. I can't say it any better than this, ladies and gentlemen. The testimony thus born to the world is of much more value than sermons or profession, professions of godliness that do not reveal good works. Let those who name the name of Hamashiach, Christ, remember that individually they are making an impression favorable or unfavorable to Bible religion on the minds of all with whom they come in contact. Our Father, as we 
prepared to kneel. I praise your holy name. That in this week and the coming months, the coming years, that we may hasten your second coming, that our attitudes may change for thy glory, for thy sake, and for our salvation. For we ask for the outpouring of your grace upon each human being in the world. And the meditation of my mind be directed by you to continue to deliver messages to win souls for your kingdom and to prepare them for baptism. That brothers and sisters who are preparing may have a fuller understanding of thy message. My appeal this evening, if anybody wants to be baptized, have them call on me that we may prepare them and send them Bible studies or go to their homes and give them and prepare Bible studies with them. Heavenly Father, there are many people who are lonely. Comfort them this evening with thy Holy Spirit. Hug them, for we know you love them. May all the humans in the world names be written in the book of life and blind on the book of iniquity. I ask for the forgiveness of all our sins. For people have sinned against thee. We praise you for hearing and answering our prayers in the name of Yeshua. Bless us throughout the week, sanctify us every morning throughout the day as we focus on thy word and make us holy, Yeshua, for our vessels are weak. But thy spirit is willing, your golden oil, that it may run through the arteries and the nervous system of our frontal lobe, that the cells may be filled with your righteousness. Forgive us all our sins, for we ask for healing in our liver, our gallbladder, our heart, our lungs, that our gasophagus and the thoracic may be healed by thy word. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, take away arthritis, take away sickness. As the day comes to a close and brings in another day, we praise you for all that you're doing, Yeshua, for we cannot comprehend fully your salvation. We praise you, holy, holy, holy Yeshua. In Yahshua's name we pray. May you be glorified, O Father, omnipotent, omniscient, only present. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.